Charles with Patches Pest Plus here. And today we got a special project. It's a little out of the norm for what we do. Uh, but moisture control is uh, in our wheelhouse. And sometimes that means we have to do some special projects. This time this special project presented itself because the store-bought $150 pressurized koi pond filter that uh, we, we got for our little pond has blown the lid off of itself. Not because it had too much pressure at all, simply because it's just not a very good build and uh, it, it gunks up very quickly and left us with a very nasty koi pond. This thing is just awful fish. Can't even see them anymore. So, out with the old, in with the new. Today we're going to build a pressurized, biological, and mechanical koi pond filter. Stay tuned, this is going to get fun. So today we're going to be talking about water filtration, in this case for a koi pond. There's all kinds of biological filters out there, but uh, we're going to do a little known thing called a pressurized filter. So it has a mechanical component and then a biological component as well. Uh, most of the time you would put a UV filter on this as well. But as our situation here is very temporary, um, we're leaving the UV off. Uh, we'll have a natural spring feeding our koi pond where we're going, so we won't have to worry about filtration when we get there. So this is a very temporary filter that we're building, but uh, you can do it long term too. Uh, it's very simple, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the build here and kind of show you how to put it together. Um, important to note is that I've used just off the shelf kind of stuff and there's all kinds of different materials you can use uh, from PEX to PVC I'm using rubber hose uh, so it, just what I had so you can use whatever you want I'm not gonna bore you with the uh, fittings uh, but I'll show you kind of how to set up the inlet and the outlet and some of the little features that I've added to it. So uh, when I get back here, we'll be looking at it. So depending on whether or not you do a four bucket, three bucket or two bucket, uh, you would want to have them set up with the inlet at the bottom and your outlet at the top. So we have, we're using a two bucket because this is just temporary for us and uh, we're no longer than we're going to be here. We're not going to worry about the other two buckets. But if you did a four bucket system, your first bucket, you would want to have a swirl down to catch the solids and have them go out into your plant beds. The second would be mechanical. Your third would be biological. And your fourth would be a UV. So um, you can even buy a UV without, you know, you don't need the bucket. You can get an inline UV filter. But always do the UV filter last. Uh, you want to remove anything that the bacteria can hide behind and that UV light can kill more of them uh, as long as that stuff's removed. So this system we're doing again is just going to be two buckets uh, because we're, we're not planning to be here very long and uh, we have a natural spring that's going to feed our koi pond where we're going and that, that'll <laughs> require no filtration uh, so to speak because it'll be passing through. So. Um, we're fine with this. This is temporary for us. When it comes to fittings, again, you can use whatever you want, PVC, PEX. Uh, we're using rubber hose here, and that's why we have the, uh, the uh, little hose adapters here to hook onto. So next step, inside. So once we bring the water into each of our buckets, you see we have the same setup in both. Uh, I had intended to put a T in there and have the water sweltering, you know, swirling, uh, from, from a T with two of these manifolds, but it didn't make it home from the store. So uh, we just used one and it works just fine. Our first test, as you can see the gunk, uh, it caught a lot of, it dispersed that material evenly. 
And the reason it's dispersing evenly is because the next thing you want is a little uh, cage to go over your uh, swirl entry. That way the water will evenly disperse coming up. So inside of that, the water is just going to be spinning and spinning and spinning as it makes its way up in the bucket. So the next thing we want is some gravel. And this gravel is going to catch all that muck, moss, leaves, all that good stuff. And that um, we're going to show you there's a clean out on this that's going to help blow all that stuff back out when we're done. And we're going to put it on all of the buckets, in our case two, and, and be able to reverse flow to clean it out, blow air in it, and uh, get that gunk dislodged and moved out. So once we got our gravel in place, uh, next comes the top of the little bucket that slips over our our little fitting there. And uh, that, that makes it force the water into this inner cavity. You know, there's, there's a little lip there. You can fill it all the way up if you wanted, but we're gonna leave the lip. And we have this coarse filter that came from our other pressure pump that fits in there perfectly. So uh, the water that makes its way into here is going to uh, catch that. I guess, I guess we can do this. We also have the leftover bio balls. This gives us a little more filter, a little more height. So now all the water that enters the uh, outlet is going to go through this filter too. So uh, we're going to catch all that big muck in this top bucket. The only thing that's going to make it out to the, uh, the biological filter are the fines. So all the big stuff's going to be trapped right here. We're going to do the same exact thing for the fines. I got another one. For this one, I went and put the holes all the way around. And that's because we're going to use media. Some, uh, some of this medium grade filter material is just sponges, those scratch sponges, scouring pads. And we're going to tuck them all the way around the outside here maybe and that's going to give us that's going to give us a bunch of uh, medium sized filtration we got some more here we're going to layer these in here get them all spread out cover that that inlet there real well yeah, I think I have a couple more down here. Right. It doesn't really matter if we're not building a, a rocket or doing brain surgery here. But so that's the first course of medium medium scouring pad. And now we're going to load it up with bunch of these green scouring pads you get these at the dollar store little to nothing and just to give you an idea how many we're going to use there's there's probably 50 of them here and uh so we're going to go ahead and get those installed and uh we'll come back so there's our first course you see i just tuck it in the side and make my way around and uh, let them overlap here in the center we're, we're trying to make sure that there is no way for the water to go anywhere but through this media. We're even going to take, after each course, we're going to fold some over and tuck them down into the sides just to make sure that everything stays nice and compact in there. Not too tight. Um, you want the water to move, after all. And you want the spaces in these sponges to still exist so if you squish them down too much uh, you'll have gaps where the water won't be able to flow and if the water doesn't flow the bacteria won't be able to grow and filter so one course laid flat and another course tucked in the sides 
so on. Then we'll start our next course going around, tucking back in the side and then folding one over the other. Now, what all this media is going to do is, is uh, allow the good bacteria that grows in there to uh, dominate. It's going to take over, going to give them a nice home, and they're going to filter that water and make it so that your fish are nice and healthy. I'll go ahead and finish this up and uh, come back and show you. So there we are, we managed to make uh, three courses. Um, each course has a, a spiral of them going a long ways to the center, and then a final row on the, you know, the each one has a tucked in to the sides to keep everything tight. I ended up with one extra this time, doesn't matter. Just gonna throw it in the middle. Same thing as the other one, we just cut out a little notch here to go around um, our fit in here. And this one, the material is filled to the top. This 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 top bucket here, the smaller one, is actually going to help hold that media down inside the bucket. Uh, and the way it's going to be held down and under pressure is with these these lids. You can get them with the seal on them already and pump it on there. But because uh, I had to remove it, um, I had to take that seal off. But it's still going to hold. That rubber gasket is going to give us the uh, seal that we need. So I'll pop these on and then we'll get them installed for you. Here's my little helper quote unquote. So here's our pond. And you can see all the muck is pretty bad. We had a frost and lost all our plants. but. This is our intake. We just used a, uh, a surface drain intake. And that runs to our pump. And we use this valve here as a regulator. I've got to stand this up still, but that regulates how much water is going either out the, uh, the fountain or into the top bucket. So we come in, this is that mechanical bucket with the gravel. And it's gonna catch all that muck, just nastiness, and deliver it into that rock. As it makes its way up, it's forced to go through that top filter and out and down to the second filter, which is below. Now you may notice here, something funky. I got a quick connect for an air compressor. So when it comes time to clean this, I can blow air into the system first and loosen all that gunk up. Same thing with the bottom. So kind of nice. Little little uh, perk to uh, help you clean it out so you don't have to empty the buckets all the time. This this gives you a little more time between uh, complete cleanings. So. And of course you never want to clean the biological side you know, thoroughly, you never want to use household water. Always rinse those off in pond water so you're not killing that bacteria. So, so out of the top bucket, mechanical, into the biological. And now it's got to make its way through all that filter cloth before it makes its way out. And that leads back to the pond. You see right now I have the, I have the flow set way down. I don't want a whole lot of water going through this because uh, it's just a small pond anyways, but uh, it's enough to catch all the gunk. I can turn it up. It's kind of a little interesting side effect. The lid here, I don't know if you can tell it's down right now. Let's go ahead and turn the pressure up in the system and watch that lid. See it rise there? If I turn the the uh, pressure back down we can push that back down and it'll stay deflated I don't I, it's a vacuum that's going on in there so anyway there's your filter now this about once a month I'll come out blow air into it 
and I'll take the the inlet hose and disconnect the clamp and put that on the I'm sorry on the outlet of the uh, top bucket and put the outlet here on the inlet and let it reverse flow and uh, we'll get all that gunk coming out of our after we blow the air we'll get all the air or the gunk coming out of each one of the air filters so really neat way to prevent having to take these break these down all the time so i hope this was helpful if you uh know anybody with a koi pond that wants a, a, a homemade biological filter put in we'd be glad to do that for them um, it's not our forte but uh, we enjoy doing it and uh, it's all part of finding balance with nature um, of course we can conceal these behind nice retaining walls or you know inside of fountains this is a temporary setup for us so don't judge me how awkward it looks it works until we get into our new house so I hope this is helpful for you. Take it easy.